Otis, did you confirm that detail on the KD10 seeker? Unfortunately, no information is available on open source intelligence, sir. Uh, okay, I suppose we will present that as just an hypothesis. If you were not so adamantly against me penetrating the Great Chinese Firewall, we could have a much more extensive set of information available, sir. Otis, I told you a million times, it is illegal, it is dangerous, so no, no way, and this is final, okay? The second option in my list, sir, is buying a KD-10 for personal use, sir. <laughs> Do they sell it on AliExpress? I can check, sir. There's quite a lot of information on YouTube about Chinese air-to-air -air weapons or even surface-to-air weapons. But there's not much about air-to-ground weapons. Well, probably it's just not as glamorous as air-to-air. -air. However, we do stuff that is not easy to find anywhere else on YouTube. So in this video, we will dive deep into this magmatic sector of the Chinese aerospace. And we will focus on air-to-surface missiles built in China. Not imported, built in China. But before starting, there is something I would like you to pay attention to. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play game available on PC. It is a team-based, you can play with your friends, and you can reproduce great naval battles using strategy and manual dexterity as well. The game features over 400 historical ships, beautiful maps, the landscape comes alive while you play, the graphic is stunning, the reproduction is great, the weather changes during the battle, a masterpiece. You can also grow and customize your own ship. In fact, there are reasons because there are 44 million players all around the world. There are five different warship types, destroyers, battleship, cruisers, submarines, and aircraft carriers, of course. Download World of Warships using the link in the description below. And if you register into the game using the link below and using the code FIRE, you will have a huge starter pack. It will include 200 doubloons, the premium battleship USS Texas, 20 restless fire camouflage, 1 million credits, and 7 days of premium account. Now, back to the video. The PLAF has always been historically an Air Force oriented toward the air-to-ground mission, so it is no surprise that there are several different types of weapons in use. Their history is quite complicated, and their development is rooted in technologies that have been acquired from abroad. But to be honest, the Chinese actually started developing their own solutions quite early. Today the Chinese weapons tend to have a sort of a Russian flavor, but now they are mostly indigenous creations. The KD-20 is a paradigm of the Chinese approach to military technology. The weapon is designed and built with indigenous technologies in China, but those technologies are based on technology transfers from Russia and the analysis of several wreckages of American tomahawks uh, recovered around the world. So the final outcome definitely benefits from the technology and the know-how acquired but it's definitely Chinese. So the KD-20 is a land attack cruise missile with a range of about 2,000 kilometers. It is launched by the H-6K bomber that can carry up to six weapons. The warhead is conventional and the weapon is aimed at attacking high-value fixed targets. It is a slightly bulky unit if compared with Western weapons, but its configuration is pretty much the same as the cruise missiles in service today everywhere else in the world. It is powered by a turbofan, it has small retractable wings, and the guidance is based on a mix of contour matching, inertial navigation, and this Mac for the terminal guide. But since the weapon was designed in the late 90s, early 2000s, we may also expect that it's actually using the Chinese Beidou uh, satellite positioning system. 
There is something to say about the guidance. In fact, inertia guidance is a sort of a self-contained guidance system that can take the weapon to specified coordinates but with a precision that normally is not sufficient for conventional weapons. Contour matching is based on the terrain altimetry that is used as a guide for the missile path. This map uses images of the target taken, let's say, before the attack to be matched with the images stored inside the missiles. And it turned out to be very, very precise. However, both contour matching and this Mac requires to acquire a large quantity of data before launching the weapon. In fact, it's necessary to map the terrain and taking the pictures of the target. We don't have information about how the Chinese collect, store and manage this information, but that would be very, very interesting because this is an essential part of the kill chain of the KD-20. However, it seems that there is a version in development that is going to replace this Mac with a mapping radar. This will give the weapon better all-weather performances and probably a radar image to be used is easier than a photographic image. The KD-63 is another cruise missile, but this time is derived by an anti-ship missile. Obviously, the KD-63 is a very different weapon, much more modern. In fact, it is a large weapon with a 500 kilos warhead designed to attack important and large ground-fixed target from a standoff distance. The weapon is subsonic and the range is estimated to be 180 kilometers. The guidance is inertial and probably Beidou based with mid-course update. For terminal guidance, the weapon features an infrared imaging sensors that by a data link relays the image back to the launching aircraft. On the launching aircraft, the operator will lock the weapon on the target and from that point onward, the missile will dive automatically on it. The H6H and H6K bombers need to carry a small communication pod behind the bomb base to communicate with the weapon if they are. The version we have described is the KD-63B. Uh, the previous version apparently is still in service and it is characterized by the fact that rather than having an infrared sensor, it has basically a TV sensor, a camera that relays a TV image back to the aircraft. And this is not very modern, to be honest. The KD-63 is a powerful weapon and it can be very precise, but it has a fundamental weakness. It requires the aircraft to stay in the vicinity for the terminal guidance. This is an intrinsic weakness of the concept itself. And the Chinese are well aware because some sources actually say that the weapon has some fire and forget capabilities, but to what extent, we don't know. The missiles that we have seen so far are large missiles launched by the H-6 bombers, but the Chinese also have weapons that can be used by tactical aircraft. The staple of this segment is the KD-88. It is generally considered the equivalent of the American SLAM, but actually the KD-88, in pure Russian style, is a family of weapons with various guidances and various purpose. The missile uses a small turbofan and it has a range of about 230 kilometers. The total weight is 670 kilos and the warhead is a semi-armor piercing warhead weighting 285 kilos, which is definitely respectable. There are two versions with different guidance system for the terminal guidance. There is a TV version and an infrared version. The missile has inertia guidance, but also data link for mid-course correction. And obviously, it transmits back the image taken by the sensor. The terminal guidance is a task that can be executed on the launching aircraft by an operator or by the pilot, or computer can be pre-programmed to execute the task automatically. And in this way, 
the weapon becomes fire and forget. In this case too, the aircraft need to carry a small external pod to communicate with the weapon. KD-88 have been seen on the JH-7A with four units, but also on the J-10 with two units and on the J-16 with two or four units. Beside the TV and the infrared guidance versions, there are two versions currently in development. There is a radar homing version and an anti-radiation version. One of the missing elements in the Chinese arsenal is a weapon in the same class as the Maverick or the Brimstone. The KD-88 is a bit too large for this task. However, this doesn't mean that they have nothing. The KD-9 and the KD-10 are long-range anti-tank missiles, but they are used only by the Z-10 and Z-19 helicopters. And they are laser-guided, which means that they are not fire and forget. However, like everything in China this time, also this family of weapons is evolving and there are pictures of a KD-10 with what is believed to be a millimeter wave sensor. A seeker like that could render the weapon fire and forget and could potentially close the gap. However, we have no news about the integration of these weapons with fixed wing platforms. So, well, Let's just wait and see. The YJ-91 is another typical Chinese story. At first sight it may seem a simple copy of a Russian weapon, the KH-31, but it is definitely not. It is based on the KH-31, which is also produced on license in China, but it features substantial modifications. So the YJ-91 is an anti-radiation missile with a range of about 100 km and a speed of Mach 3. It weighs about 600 kilos with a warhead of 87 kilos. The general configuration of the weapon is definitely Russian and it is one of those Russian weapons that use ramjets to achieve these very high supersonic speeds. But everything else is different. In particular, the warhead and the guidance are definitely Chinese. The seeker has been updated and it is considered to be more effective, much more effective than the original Russian one. It is a modern multiband seeker designed to address a wide range of potential threats. Unlike the KH-31 that needs to be locked on a specific source of emissions before launch, the YJ-91 is basically independent from the electronic uh, surveillance systems on the aircraft. Also, the Chinese have autonomously developed an anti-ship version. The guidance is always the same, anti-radiation, and it is supposed to lock onto the radar systems of the target. This version of the weapon is capable of terminal maneuvering, and a Mach 3 missile that is capable of terminal maneuvering is definitely a bad customer. However, you may expect that the speed at sea level is not Mach 3, and also the range of the missile, since it needs to preserve some energy for maneuvering is not the same as the other version, probably shorter, but still it is an interesting opponent. Obviously the anti-ship version is in use with the naval aviation and can be operated either from ground or from the carriers. Obviously the inventory doesn't stop here because there are Russian weapons in services and there are older versions of Chinese weapons still in service. There's also a pretty rich landscape of guided bombs, but this will be the subject of another video. But if you're interested, we have quite a few videos about the Chinese Air Force that are going to appear beside me. Thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video and thank you to you for watching it till the end. See you there!